video tutorial we will work through a sample problem using the stiffness matrix method to analyze a 2D coplanar truss. This problem can be found in the structural analysis book by Hibbler. Firstly we must begin by numbering each member of the truss 1, 2 and 3 in black with a box to avoid confusion. Now to label each node 1, 2, 3 and 4 in blue with nodes 1, 2 and 4 all constrained from displacement because of their connection at supports. Labeling the degrees of freedom now we start with the only two unconstrained degrees of freedom at node 3 applying the label 1 and 2 in the global x and y directions. We know that we have four nodes, so therefore we must have eight degrees of freedom for the truss. We now choose the near and far ends of each member in our truss, showing this with an arrow with the head at the far end and the tail of the arrow at the near end of each member. The dimensions of this truss are as follows, and they will become important when performing calculations to create each member stiffness matrix. In order to maintain all joint coordinates positive, the origin of global coordinates is chosen to be at node 1, with the x-axis spanning right and the y-axis reaching upwards. The member global stiffness matrix is given by the equation as shown. A, E and L are common to each of the 16 terms in the matrix. The columns and rows are organized by near node X and Y degrees of freedom and far node X and Y degrees of freedom in red. Lambda X and Lambda Y are the components which make up the member stiffness matrix. These are directional cosines which can be calculated by the angle of the member in relation to the global X and Y coordinates or by using the near and far coordinates of each member. Now we will begin the process of calculating the member stiffness matrix for member 1. The near x and y degrees of freedom for this member are labelled 5 and 6 as shown, with 1 and 2 labelled as the far x and y degrees of freedom. Remembering that our origin is at node 1, we know that the far end of our member is 1.2 meters in the x direction away from the origin and 0.9 meters in the y direction. Firstly, we will determine our values for lambda x and lambda y. This can be done by two ways, using the near and far coordinates or the angle that the member is at. So for lambda x, we know that far x is 1.2 meters away from the origin, and that near x is on the origin, so it is zero. Also, by simple trigonometry using Pythagoras' theorem, the length of the member is 1.5 meters. So lambda x is 0 0.8 so we repeat this for lambda y and we know that the far node is 0 0.9 meters away in the y direction with the near node at the origin being 0 again dividing again by the length of our member 1.5 meters this gives us a lambda y of 0 0.6 Using these values for lambda x and lambda y, we can begin to create the member stiffness matrix. So we know from the formula that k is equal to ae over l, but we will incorporate l into our matrix by dividing our lambdas over l. Our first value in row 1, column 1 is lambda x squared, so we have 0 0.8 squared divided by the length 1.5, which gives us 0 0.427. Our second figure is lambda x by lambda y, which is 0 0.8 by 0 0.6, and again divided by 1.5, our length we get 0 0.32. We continue this on to create our completed member matrix. Then labeling the degrees of freedom near x, near y, far x, and far y 
as 5, 6, 1 and 2. This labelling will be useful when creating the structure stiffness matrix. As we can see, the degrees of freedom correspond directly to the label degrees of freedom in the diagram. We use the same method for member 2, first ensuring we have the correct degrees of freedom near and far end of the member and dimensions with the length of the member at 1.8 meters. So for lambda x, the far end is 3 meters from our origin at node 1, with the near end 1.2 meters from the origin, all divided by our length 1.8 meter, meters, which gives us a lambda x of 1. Now we can create our member matrix as before, and as you may notice, the matrix is symmetrical either side of the diagonal. That is the same for all matrices created here. Once your calculations are correct, we label the matrix again with our, with our degrees of freedom. Now the same procedure once again for member 3. Note here that our lambda y value is negative, so just watch the signs when creating the matrix. To create the structure stiffness matrix, all we do is add all three matrices together. This is done by addition of their common degrees of freedom. So for example, K11, all we do is take the values of 1, 1 from every member stiffness matrix and add them, which is 0 0.427 plus 0 0.56 plus 0 0.427 equals 1.414 and we put it into the structure matrix. For matrix figure K21 we add each intercept of row 2 with column 1 which is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.32 which is equal to zero. And we continue on with that process. We create an eight by eight matrix because we have a total of eight degrees of freedom. Now that we have our structure stiffness matrix, we can begin to go about calculating our unknown displacements. We only have two unknown displacements in this structure and they are both at node 3. We will label these D1 and D2. There are no other displacements because all the other nodes are supported. The red numbered labels correspond to their respected degrees of freedom. There is also a 20 kN load applied in a downward direction opposite to degree of freedom 2 at node 3 also. This can be assumed as part of our known forces along with a 0 kN force for a degree of freedom 1. Therefore there are 6 other unknown forces at the remaining 3 nodes.